Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. You know, God was showing me when we were singing that He's for us. He's against sin. He's against sin because sin will destroy who He loves. But He's for you. And I think religion gets it all messed up sometimes. And we get to thinking God's against us. He's not against us. He's against the proud because he's against pride because it destroys people. He's against sin because it destroys who he loves. But he's for us. And what I was feeling when we were singing that is that some of you, and I'm, can I just talk real, some of you have been playing around with some stuff. Been playing around with some stuff. And you know what you want, you see that what's available, that what we just sang about, that kind of home, that kind of wholeness, that kind of healing, that kind of freedom that we've sang about this morning, you want it. You want it. Let me, let me put it this way. You're wishing for it. We talked about this last week. You're wishing for it. All God needs is your fight. All God needs, he can't just, because of the authority he placed on man and on the earth, he can't just zap that life to you. And I know that he fights our battles, but he also talks about us fighting the good fight of faith, which means us putting our will into action of what we want. Oh, we say we want it. I think we're wishing for it. Because if we want it, we're going to dig in until we find it. And he's willing. He's for us. He's for you. He's for you. He's for your marriage. He's, he's for your home. He's for your success. He's for those things. He's already made provision for them. We need to quit wishing for them and want them like they are the like his word is the necessity of our life. Like that next breath that you want when somebody's holding you underwater, I'm going to dig in your word and I'm going to breathe it in. I'm going to I'm going to fight for it until I find it. Go through the deception and through the lies and through the laziness of just wishing for something and let's get in and get it. It's provided. SJ, all I got to do is find it and believe. That's faith. Find it and believe. So you want your life to be different. This is what we talked about last week, and I don't want to re-preach it. If you missed it, I'm sorry. But tomorrow can be different than today. You hold that power. It's called your will. And God will not go against your will. If you want to wake up different tomorrow and you want to think different tomorrow, then you will it and you want it and he gives you something to do and that is renew your mind. Romans 12. You've got to change how you think. If you're going to change how you think, you've got to exchange your thoughts for something different. And that takes effort. But I really feel this morning he wants to put the fight back in you from wishing to understanding wanting. Want it. I want it. Do you want it? You want your marriage? Come on, church. Do you want your marriage? Do you want your mind? Do you want joy? Do you want peace? Do you want it? Do you want it? I want it, Bo. <laughs> I want it not just for me. But for our, our mates, for our children, for our children's children, it's got to start somewhere. If you've got generational curses of depression, of addiction, of divorce, how bad do you want to break it? Because the anointing is there to break the yoke, right? You don't have to be harnessed in that stuff. It's not your identity. I don't know, be seated, I'm going to preach, I guess. I, just that, mm, he just, he's for you. He's not working against you. He's working for you. He's working with you. And I so enjoyed last week 
about sowing seed for tomorrow, it, it, I know it's, an, it's not a new revelation, but it was a fresh revealing to me. And I'm telling you, I appreciate y'all letting me have a good time up here. I want you to go with me to Psalm 127. This was birthed out of last week's message somehow. Uh, this is the next thought that came to me. I'm just going to read part A of verse 1, if you'll allow me to divide it up that way. It's pretty much the only scripture I had for today until the last minute, and then God gave me some other things. But, and we may not get past this one sentence. I'm reading it to you out of the NIV. Are you there? Psalm 127, 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Now, I got to thinking about that. Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers or the builders labor in vain. Well, I thought it said unless the Lord builds the house. So I got to thinking on this. If the Lord's building the house, who are the builders laboring? Well, fortunately for us, we, we, we built a house a couple of years ago. Can you believe it's been a couple of years already? The whole COVID thing happened. It's like we, we built a house and lived in it for two years before we saw anybody. We, 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 had, we had the house built. And people often ask us, who was your builder? You know, people who are looking to build, they'll say, who was your builder? And I'll say, I'm not going to give him a full ad here unless he's going to send me a commission. I'll just say, Robert. So, you know, I'll tell them, you know, Robert, he was our builder. But, you know, Robert didn't frame not one board of my house. But I just called him my builder. Robert never hung a light fixture in my house. He didn't set a window in my house. He did hang some deer heads for us, didn't he, baby? We didn't want to go up that high. We sent the builder up. He didn't do any of the electrical work. He didn't do any of the plumbing. But he's my builder. He, he's my builder. What he did do was he had a plan. He, had, he made sure that there was a plan. He made sure that there were materials available and provided for, ready for use. He made sure of that every single day. Ride out was bringing trucks out. Vincent Electric was bringing out light fixtures. The insulation was coming in. The roofers were coming in. And the builder's job was to make sure that anything that was needed that week was on site. Oh, there's my deal, and I kept looking for you. Like, where's my electrician? He made sure. That's the builder's job. That's his job. He was oversight. I... Well, I guess I did kind of go down every day and make sure they were working. But I usually fed them when I came, right? And I'd go down, I'd cook for the guys, I'd take them breakfast or whatever, whatever crew was working. But Robert, my builder, was oversight. He went in and he made sure that everybody was doing what they were supposed to do and he would give them instruction on what they were to do. He gave the laborers instruction. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. That's God. That's God. He makes sure that there's a plan, right? He makes sure that the materials are provided for and available, and he provides oversight and instruction. That's who he is. He's not in here straightening out your husband, Straightening out your wife, straightening out your thinking, he provides the material. He provides what's needed. But y'all, we build our house. We build our marriage. Rusty and I build our marriage. God makes sure there's a plan. He makes sure we have what we need available. He's oversight and he's instruction. But he didn't put the windows in. You put the windows in. Right? 
It's not God that builds your home. That word build, I like words. Sometimes we see little nuggets when we look up these Greek or Hebrew words. This is in the Old Testament. So it would be Hebrew. This word build, bana, I know. If it didn't give phonic instruction in those little parentheses, I wouldn't know what to call it. It's B-A-N-A-H, bana. It means to make or to establish. Unless the Lord makes and establishes the house. But then the next definition was fascinating to me, Ricky. You just got to keep reading in these definitions. It, it means, it can also mean, rebuild something that is destroyed. Let's talk about that in our homes. What about relationship between parent and children, husband and wife, mother and father, I mean, our homes are more than just the people living in the house, in my opinion. Unless the Lord rebuilds what has been destroyed, they labor in vain to try to rebuild it. You know, you know his word is very capable of giving you what you need to rebuild what's been destroyed in your relationships. It's very capable it's very available. One of those tools, and this is not in my notes, but we're just going to go there anyway, okay? One of those materials that we talked about last week that's been available to us is forgiveness. It's not our favorite tool. Not necessarily our favorite tool, but it's necessary. Because your relationship will never grow past your unforgiveness. And I don't just mean with the person. I mean your unforgiveness in life. Because it will, it will seep into the crevices of every area of your life. The scripture teaches it will grow into a root of bitterness if you don't get rid of it. And there, we have a God who has given us forgiveness so that we have forgiveness to give. We taught that last week, right? We have it. We have it. And I know, I know it goes against everything in your mind. I just want to ask you, do you want to be free? Are you wishing you were free? How do I forgive? Get in that book and read it. And I, I can give you a, in a nutshell, you're going to have to do it by faith. Right? Because it is not in your wheelhouse. Of your flesh to forgive. But he tells us that if we will forgive, we'll be forgiven. It's a seed. It's a seed. So when I have somebody I need to forgive, which happens pretty often when you're a pastor. Get talked about a lot. I, by faith, say, I have already chosen. Because it helps if you pre-forgive. It's way easier than forgiving after. I have already forgiven them. You know, Jesus has already forgiven you before the things that come in your future. If he can do that, then he wants me to do that. Are you predetermined to forgive so that you can live in the freedom in your relationships that God created for you to live in? And I'm not saying you have to put yourself back in a harmful position, okay? Nobody here believes that. Right? We have laws for that. We'll, we'll throw whoever's hind end in jail in love if you're abused. Okay? So don't take me wrong. But for you to be free from the offense to where you can continue to live, that's where he wants us. That's where he wants us. And I've had offenders. And I can say they're forgiven. And I'm going to take it a stretch further, and I can say I have a love for them. They're not going to abuse me again, but I have love for them. I have love for them because God gave me love, and he gave me love to give. Right? Last week's lesson. You can rebuild something that's destroyed, and it's going to start with forgiveness. You can't. 
You can't live in a home and keep bringing up the past sins of the relationship and move forward. Either you're going to forgive it and move forward, or you're going to stay there and rehearse and live in that pain every single day. Do you want to be free? Either you decided to stay and work this out in the relationship, or you're done with it, and you have to make up your mind because this middle ground doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work for anybody. And, and we want to live free. Definitely not in the notes, but let's just take it, right? Unless the Lord makes, establishes the house, or rebuilds what was destroyed, its builders labor in vain. You know, if you don't have the plan, if you don't have the way, you can work and work and work and work, and there's no guarantee of what you're going to end up with. Any of you ever built something without a plan? How'd that turn out for you? Pretty good. Well, then you're good. Oh, Dwayne, it would be you. We, we didn't just go slap up some concrete and some boards and throw a roof on the top of it and call it home. Baby, will you hand me those, please? We went through a lot of effort. I started wanting a house, whew, I guess about 2014. I did, but I didn't know what I wanted. Oh, let me, I wished for a house about 2014. Rusty didn't really like the house we were living in that well. He likes it big and open. He had, it was more chopped up. And it worked for us for the time being. It was a place of healing for us. Then we decided we wanted to start building. Y'all, I'm serious. I looked at so many. Y'all, have y'all done that? Looked at so many house plans online till you just, you just forget it. Get me a camper and let's move out to the land. I mean, I mean it was just like, I know what I want, but I don't know what I want. I, and you do that in your home sometimes. You know, you know what you, you want, but then... It's so impossible for you to see it. So we had to have a plan. So we went to work on plans. And I I had a cousin that had a house. And I I saw it in her pictures on social media. I was like, I'm going to come see your house. So I traveled to northwest Arkansas. I went to her house. And I loved her house, but it wasn't perfect for us. She had more kids than we did. We were empty nesters. And and so we began. She gave me her house plans. And you know what? Her house plans didn't work for my house. There were some things I liked about it, but it wasn't perfect because our house was diff- our, our needs were different. So you can look at Uncle Mike and Aunt Pam, or you can look at, at Mom and Dad. You can look at Mary and Ricardo. You can look at Bo and SJ. You can look at them and say, well, this is what they do. And it may not all fit for you. So we had to kind of work on it and find what worked for us. And we began, we went to a lady and she started, she'd send me something and she'd say, okay, do you love this or do you hate it? And I'd I'd tell her, "I, I love that. She connected to my Pinterest, ladies, so she could see anything I had pinned. She had access to my heart. When she saw my heart, she could draw the plan for my home. God sees your heart, honey. He sees your heart. What it is that you desire on the deepest part of you, He sees it better than you can see it. He has a plan for you, and He's going to make it so visible. A vision board. What is that? What is that verse, Habakkuk? Write the vision. And you write it so plain that those that come by and see it can run with it and tell it. So we began to work. Page after page. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Y'all just want to see my house, don't you? Listen to the lesson. Y'all can all come out someday. We began to work with it. But you know what? We didn't have a house. But our want to went from wishing to want and, and we got with Robert. And, and Robert got with our house plans. We had to change some things. We had to move some things. We had to do some things different until we got it to where we were ready to walk in it. 
Put the work in on it. Put the effort in on it. Put the money in on it. Do you want it enough to build it? Because it looks great on paper, folks. And what's in those verses that you hold in your lap, they look great on paper. But Proverbs 31 is a whole lot different when you're ready to walk it out than it is when you read it. We got, we got to move from wishing to wanting. If you don't have a plan, there's no guarantee what you'll end up. In fact, I can just almost guarantee, unless you're Dwayne, it'll be a mess. <laughs> that word vain, right? The word vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, it's builders labor in vain. It means useless. It means emptiness. But that's not all. It also involves the words deception and malice and falsehood. So unless the Lord, and I'm going to say unless the word, because you can interchange those, builds the house, they labor in vain... I'm going to say self-deceit that build it. Because sheer willpower can't fix your relationship. You've wanted it or wished for it. You may have even wanted it and not known how to walk it out. It, it, takes, it takes the Lord involved so that it's not just a waste of time. And when this says vain, it doesn't just mean a waste of time. It also means... It's actually dangerous and destructive for you to try to build it the wrong way. Right? When you build it the wrong way. Anybody ever built... No, don't raise your hand. Just smile. You ever built a relationship the wrong way? Nothing against that person. Nothing against you. You just built it the wrong way. What happened? Hurt. Hurt happened because you deceived yourself in thinking that building the relationship this way would work instead of the Lord's way that does work. We've all done it. Unless you're really, really young and you were raised really, really right, you've been there. And you know what it's like for it to be in vain. The word labor, labor in vain. <laughs> I, I got me a new word of the week out of this one. That word labor, it means to work severely and with irksomeness. That's what the strong said, irksomeness. It's my new word, Ricky. I'm going to use it all week on the staff. Oh, that's irksome. <laughs> irksomeness. You know what irksomeness means? Because I looked it up. Causing annoyance, weariness, and frustration. You ever been irksome? Ever had some irksomeness? Have you ever labored with irksomeness? That's because we're laboring wrong. We're laboring wrong. And it's frustrating. And it makes it, makes it annoying. And it wears you out. Because we're reusing the wrong tools. We're using the wrong plan. And it becomes irksome. Try, try using that at work. It's great. But a house plan, a blueprint, alleviates that because we have a plan. Our builder had these blueprints not just for himself and not just for us, but he had them there for every single laborer in the house. Kids, you're involved in your home. You have a part. You can't fix mom and dad, but you can serve God in your home and it'll make a difference in your home. Dad, you're part of the plan. Dad, you're a huge part of the plan. Mom, you're part of the plan. You, you can't let somebody else do all the work. You can't let somebody else do all the work. You have a part to play. God put it in the paper. He made it plain. 
He made it plain for us. Each and every labor needed to have an understanding. I think this is where we miss it. We don't have an understanding of the importance of our part in the plan. Kids sometimes disobey. They don't understand the importance of obedience. They don't understand the purpose of it. So if you're having, you're having a rebellion problem in your home, you need to have an understanding of why it's important to be obedient. You can take them to Proverbs and you can, t- you can teach them about the foolish child and the wise child and they can see a difference. They might, might catch a glimpse on why they want to make the wise choice. So we have to use his plan. Now Dylan, my little electrician, if you'll come up here please. We got to watch Dylan in a whole new light while our house was being built. And, and we have pretty tall ceilings and, and uh, Dylan would be on scaffolding like, I don't know. He, like, loved it. I would have been tied off, buckled, you know. You were, what, 27 feet high or so? And he'd just be... Or, you know, you might come in and find him sitting up on a beam. We found our painter sitting up on a beam one day. I'm like, do not do that in my house. (laughs) It's like, oh, Dylan's a believer, so I wasn't too, too worried about him other than I question his wisdom sometimes. Um, Dylan, if you will, find your part in there. Because we each have to know our part, and we each have to understand the vision. You want Rusty come hold one into that? You're used to the curling, aren't you? You don't have to be in a hurry. We're, we're fine. It's in there somewhere. You probably remember. Yeah, there's an even better page somewhere, I think. I think it says electrical. All right, yep, maybe. Dylan's an electrician. And a good one. We depend, our life depends on it. <laughs> Dylan, how did you know where to put my lights in my living room? You told me. Where is it? It's right here. All those little circles? Uh huh. It's got the measurements off the inside of your outside walls. Oh, hand me that mic so I can just set it up here, please. You're such a trusted assistant, babe. <laughs> Do I need it? There you go. How did you know where to put my lights, Dylan? Let's rephrase that on where we can hear you. Uh, there's little dots, little circles on the page that gives me the exact measurements off the inside of the outside walls. To, I know, that doesn't make sense. Uh, to put the lights. Um, there's a lot in your living room. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to be able so, to see each other. But it, it's, it's giving me the exact grid, the layout, exactly where it needs to go. Okay. So, Dylan doesn't just walk into my house and decide where he wants lights. Now, he had a little bit of artistic freedom in our house because he knows us and we love him and we trust him. You better better stick close. So, we gave him a little artistic freedom and he did some things that weren't necessarily in the plans, right? He gave us some uh, uplighting on top of the beams and that's what he was doing, crawling around up there and, and different things like that. But as a general rule... He's going to go by the specific instruction. And if he doesn't, he's going to ask us. And you know, that's what I love about God and his instruction in in teaching us. He works with our our personalities and gives us some creative freedom. He tells you guys to love your wife. But you can use some creative freedom in how you love your wife. And you should. Ladies, you have your own personality, you have your own gifts, your own talents, and when he tells you to honor your husband, you can be creative in how you do that. He he gives you the guidelines, and he gives you a little artistic freedom in it, and I love that about God. Otherwise, we'd all just be little clones out here. But we're all different in how we love. As long as we love, we get some creative freedom in that. But Dylan didn't just go in there and start doing what he wanted to do. He had instruction. Well, that's the way my daddy did it. Well, that's not how I want it. That's not what, that's not what it said to do. You can't do it the way you and Rachel would want it. I'm sure you would have corrected several things that I like that you would like different. But he can't do that. He has to do it by the instruction and, and Robert made sure he did. The builder made sure he did. He instructed him, gave him oversight, and made sure they did what they were supposed to do. Were the fixtures provided for you? Yes, they were. You didn't go out and make lights 
nor did you pick them out. And, and that's what God, he's the builder, he's the overseer, but you know, he's already provided and has there for you what you need, just like we talked about forgiveness and love a while ago. He's already provided it. He's given you love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith. All of those things that you wish you had in your home are provided for, but you know how you get them? They're called the fruit of the... Yeah, get that thing out. They're called the fruit of the Spirit, and to have them, you walk in the, by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Oh, do I want peace. How, how, is, it I got, how is it I got peace? Well, you got, you got to go get the instruction for it. If you want it in your home, you got to go get the instruction for it. It's provided, it's in the supply house, but how do you get it and how do you put it in your home? He makes it so plain. I'm sorry, Dylan, you can go sit. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll roll these around pretty good. Um, we can find it if we want to find it. And if we want it to look like the plan, we go by the plan. And I'm sorry that that you weren't raised in a home that way or you weren't taught that way, but if you want it, we get it because it's provided. God's already provided it for us. You know, one of the commentaries that I read this morning said, look to God for plan, materials, and cooperation. Isn't that good? Look to God for the plan, the materials, and the cooperation because he will work with you. He, he will work with you. We talked about this in the process of faith with Abraham and Sarah many times. God will teach you what you want to know. He will show you. Seek and you will find when you seek with all your heart. Because if you're not seeking with all your heart, something will stop you from your seeking. But you have to make up your mind what you want. When you make up your mind what you want, you go for it. You find the plan He'll, he'll supply the material, and he will cooperate with you. Very quickly, 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I'm reading out of the NIV in verse 2. It says, grace and peace be yours. Favor, grace, peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Oh, I want grace and peace in my I want grace and peace operating in my life. What? Okay, well, there you go. It's multiplied, King James Version says, through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. How well you know God? How, what kind of revelation do you have of Jesus Christ? Because you can come to church and you can sit on a pew and, and it, it not go any deeper than that. Or you can decide, let me tell you, when you open up your heart and you say, God, I want I want you. I want you to show me. I want you to teach me. I want you to work with me in this marriage. I'm telling you, he'll come at you from every direction. Every song will sound different. You'll pick stuff up out of it. Every message that you hear at church, it may be on prosperity and you're working on your marriage. Something that's said in that message will be for you for your marriage. I mean, you'll, just, it'll, you'll be like a magnet that starts drawing the wisdom and the knowledge of God to you where you're seeking him, what you're seeking him about. It'll, you'll see a book, somebody will say something to you, you'll turn on the TV. You know, there's just so many avenues that he can use people. And, and you'll be like a magnet for it when you're ready for it, when you want it. And he says... Grace and peace will be yours through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. His divine power has given us everything. Say everything. everything. And nothing lacking there. His divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. See, we want the goods without the knowledge. The goods come through the knowledge. They come through the knowledge. Man, it was hard to quit reading there. Uh, through these, he's given us 
uh, very great and precious promises so that through them you get to participate in the divine nature. Not your nature, the divine nature. That means where you couldn't love, you can love. Where you couldn't forgive, you can forgive. Where you couldn't move forward, you can move forward. And you get to escape the corruption in the world that's caused by evil desires. You get to escape it. You get to skip it. You get to rise above it. For this very reason, make every effort. Oh, man, there goes that. There goes that part that I wish for. No effort. Make every effort. Man, I hate to use even vague examples because I don't want you to think I'm talking about you if you've been in the office. We want to help you. We want to help you. Our office staff is here. We're not like, we're not like a lot of churches that don't keep office hours. We keep office hours. We're here for you. You call. You make an appointment. You know, somebody on staff will meet with you, will visit with you, will give you godly counsel. We're not counselors, but we'll we'll tell you what the scripture says. But if you're not making every effort, we can't fix it. We can't fix it. Make every effort. Most of the time, if you're making effort, every effort, you, you probably won't even need us. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every relationship problem in our home, and in our families is a relationship and misunderstanding with God problem. We're missing knowledge somewhere. We're either ignorant of it or we're in rebellion of it every single time. So God has given us blueprints, blueprints of how to build what he's provided. Very detailed I can go to one page in here and I can tell you in one look how many windows are in my house. I, I, they could go and they could look at, a, at a, a number in the chart and a number on a window or a letter on a window and they knew exactly what window went in what space in my house. We didn't, we didn't just make them go up there and try to push windows into holes to see which one would fit. We were very detailed. It made their job a whole lot easier. God has made a way for you. We just follow, we just, we just follow the instruction. We just do what it says to do. Can I read to you just a minute? We're still early. Ephesians 5. I'm going to read it to you out of the Passion Translation. So if you want to, just listen to me. Or if you want to follow along in whatever version you have or device, you can. I'm reading it to you out of the Passion. Ephesians 5, 21. Out of reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. That's telling you where to put the window. Oh, I don't want that window to go there. Well, it doesn't matter. That's, what the, win- that's the hole that that was made for. And you can try to fit another window if, in there if you want to, but it's not going to fit right. Wives, Susan, this means being devoted to your husband like you are tenderly devoted to the Lord. Oh, I'm devoted to the Lord. I love the Lord. Well, I got to fit Rusty in that window. How do I want you to think for a minute, maybe even just put this in your notes and you can write it out later. How do you love the Lord? What how do you how do you show your love to the Lord? Man, nobody wants to answer this one. They are fixing to rope themselves in, box themselves in. I want you to think about that. Obedience, serving, time, 
worship, devotion, scripture used that word devoted to. Well, he's asking us wives to love our husbands as we are tenderly devoted to the Lord. And if he's going to use that word as, then I need to think about what that means. I don't get fruity on me and get started scared. You're going to have to be obedient to some slave driver. That's not what I'm talking about. Because a man's got a side in here too. But our attitudes, man, God started talking to me this year about authority and submission. Probably going to teach it during Ladies Agape. Um, there's something to it. And I, and I understand. I'm a strong-willed woman too. But I have a, a want for a good marriage and a good home. And if the plan says that I need to be tenderly devoted to my husband like I am tenderly devoted to the Lord, then I adjust. Whew, let's get on the men for a minute here. Whew. For the man, I like to not made it through verse 22. For the husband provides leadership for the wife. Just as Christ provides leadership for his church as the savior and reviver of the body. Oh, oh, I like this one. Guys, as. I know, Bo, it's time to close. Bo's like, time to go to lunch. Provide leadership for the wife. How? As Christ provides leadership for the church. Jesus ain't no bully. He loves his church. He gave himself for his church. He provided for the church. As. Right? As. As the savior and reviver of the body. Husbands, as. Christ was the savior and the reviver of the church, of the church body. You are as Christ to your wife. In the same way the church is devoted to Christ. You see, you see that how this is cause and effect here? You know, there's this, there's this response. There's the way the man is, the way Jesus is, and there's the response from the church, from the from the bride, from the wife. I, I, love, I love it. My dad used to always say, women are responders. So true. So true. Jesus gave himself for us. We respond in love, adoration, and worship, and respect. In the same way the church is devoted to Christ, let the wives be devoted to their husbands in everything. In the same way. In the same way, in the same way. And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us, his bride. For he died for us, sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the word of God. That's how he corrects us. That's how you correct your wife. I mean, it's, it's just in here. Every outlet, every electrical socket, every fixture, every part that you need for your home, it is written plainly in the blueprint. All we got to do is follow it. He died for us, sacrificing himself, cleansing us. All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy, without flaw or fault. Husbands have the obligation of loving and caring for their wives in the same way they love and care for their own bodies. For to love your wife is to love your own self. No one abuses his own body, but he pampers it. I love that. Underline that part. He pampers it. Isn't that good? Serving and satisfying its needs. (laughs) 
That's exactly what Christ does for his church. He serves and satisfies us as members of his body. For this reason, a man is to leave his father and his mother and lovingly hold to his wife since the two have become joined as one flesh. Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty, a great mystery of Christ and his church. So every married man should be gracious to his wife, just as he is gracious to himself, and every wife should be tenderly devoted to her husband. Chapter 6, children, if you want to be wise, listen to your parents and do what they tell you, and the Lord will help you. For the commandment, honor your father and your mother, was the first of the Ten Commandments with a promise attached. You will prosper and you will live long, full life, if you honor your parents. Fathers, don't exasperate your children, but raise them up with loving discipline and counsel that brings the revelation of the Lord. Oh, this is what we want, or is this what we wish for? Because we had to put our flesh in its place, follow the plan, not build it our way if we want it to work his way. Oh. Proverbs 14, 1, every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. 1 Peter 3, 7, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. I love that phrase. Dwell with your wives according to knowledge, not your knowledge. His knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor to your wife. Don't you talk about your wife at work? Wrong. You ought to be the one guy in the shop that every other guy thinks he's in love. Oh, that doesn't look goofy. That's what they want. That's what they crave. That's what they're looking for. So you don't talk negative about them at the shop. Give honor to your wife as under the weak as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not Oh, so not honoring your wife can hinder your prayers? Yeah, because faith works by love, buddy. Sister, faith works by love. Your home, your relationships have to be built. It's not just going to happen. We have to show up for work, blueprint in hand. Show up for work, blueprint in hand. Because if you don't keep it in front of you, you'll go rogue. We need to keep it in front of us, amen? Y'all ready to go to work? Do you want it? And if you're not married, work on yourself. If you don't want to be married, Paul made it very plain. That is a godly stance. He has nothing against that stance of being single is not lesser than. But we still have relationships. So you can apply this where it applies. And if you're not married yet and you desire to be married, great time to look at the blueprint really well. That way you know if y'all are on the same page for the vision of your home. Amen? And all the married people say, Amen. all right, y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.